Hey everybody, how's it going? Joe's Neon here. Hey listen, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about what's going on in the, uh, in the Axe community. And people coming up with all kinds of prog projects and there's so many new people out there on YouTube that are building axes and really enjoying it and really having fun with it. Um, a couple of guys off the top of my head I could think of. Uh, Tripper, Tripper the McCullough guy, he's uh, the McCullough man, Tripper the McCullough man, I believe that's what his channel is. Um, he's, he's hanging axes, he's having a ball doing it. Get Stick Customs, G-U-I-T-S-T-I-C-K, Customs with a K. Um, check him out, he's having a blast, he's having a blast um, hanging handles. A lot of these guys are new, a lot of these guys have been around for a while, you know. But... There's one gentleman in particular that I wanna I wanna mention and I wanna talk about, and that's Buckin' Billy Ray Smith. Now, I know that most of you guys out there know who Buckin' is. Um, he's got a great channel. He lives up in Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Um, he's just a really, really upstanding man. He's he he sends out a real positive message. He's developed quite an amazing community with his YouTube channel. Um, he cuts trees, you know, and, and, and he's real good at what he does, whether he admits it or not, but he's real good at what he does. But he's, he has a, a passion for hanging axes and hanging old axes. And he's developed quite a little business for himself, selling these axes. And he's a very, very, very busy man making axes. Um, but recently, he put up a video on the best handle he's ever made today and um, it's a great video it's a really super great video if anybody's out there interested in hanging axes or just likes to watch the videos about hanging axes go check out Buck and Billy Ray Smith's video on the best handle he's made yet uh, you're gonna find out you're gonna really find out what it takes to make an axe handle from a blank piece of wood a blank which I mean is just a board. It's a lot, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And it's stock removal. What you're doing is, is, is you're removing the stock that you don't want to create the shape, to sculpt, I like that word, to sculpt the shape of the ax handle. And all along the way, you're feeling it, you're, you're, you're checking it, you're, you're eyeing it, you're, you, it, it's a process where you, you take a, a little off here, you take a little bit off there, you, you become one with this project. You really, really do. And when it comes to fitting a head on an ax, I don't know how many of you folks have tried it, I'm sure a lot of you guys have done it out there, but if you've never done it, to do it properly, it's a real task. You just don't take the handle, slide the head on there, and drive a wedge in it, and it's over and done with. No, it's, there's, there's a lot to it to get it properly hung, to get it properly seated on the handle so that it never comes off and it never comes loose. If you do it right, that's what you'll end up with. Um, but, you know, along in this process, I just made a couple of notes for myself here. You know, along in this process, you'll find out that um, there's no real good enough. Along the way, you really try to perfect your art of sculpting these handles. And if you make mistakes along the way, they can be very, very costly mistakes. So, one, either you don't make them, or you try your darndest not to make the mistakes. Sometimes you can't help it. I've had axes that were completely done, and I decided to drive a steel wedge, and I would I put a split right underneath the head, down into the handle, split about that far when I drove that steel wedge in. Done. Drill it out. Garbage. From beautiful axe handle to firewood, <laughs> you know? But that's how it can go. That's how it can go. Um, like I said, I'm really excited because I'm, I've been getting a lot of enjoyment lately. I've had some really great axe projects, 
and one recently, um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but what I, what I want to show you is some of the latest projects. Now these handles I have, I have made from stock, stock removal, blanks. Okay, now you guys have seen this. This is the beautiful pickaxe that I got from my buddy Tim Ledoux. You know, I mean, <laughs> axe handles are getting harder and harder and harder and almost impossible to find a decent axe handle. Sorry, we're going to have a little wind here and there in today's market. You're better off spending the extra time and making one from a blank. I get all my blanks from Nick Thrain, Thrain Axe and Saw. You can just look them up. Google him, Thrain, T-H-R-A-N-E, Nick Thrain, he's a great guy, give him a call, tell him Joe's Neon sent you, and he'll hook you up, you know, but it, it takes, I'd say, four times as long to five times as long to make a handle from stock, from a, from a, from a blank, than it does to buy a pre-shaped handle. You buy a pre-shaped handle, there's still a lot of wood you're going to have to take off it if you want it if you want it to be done right. So we got the pickaxe. That's that's a uh, blank, made from a blank. Um, this one here, this big old master mechanic. This is a Nick Thrain blank. It's got some curly in it. I've showed you this one before, but I just want to show you because this is all, all done by hand. Every bit of it, all of the shaping. A lot of work there, you know? I know Billy knows, don't you Billy? You know how much work is there. Um, I just, oh, you, I think you saw this one too. This is the little cruiser that I got from Chris Callinger. That's from a blank. Yeah, I know some of you guys wanna get into doing some leather work too. You know, start making making up some uh, sheaths, making your own sheaths. Um, I got this one here. I call the Marauder. This is from a blank, and this is a four-pound head on a 26-inch handle. Look at that thing. I did a little burning on this one. Fucking Billy Ray, he burns his handles. He burns the wood on his handles and sands them down. I just wanted this one nice and dark, so I burned it and um, I left it. Got the waka on there, real nice. Big old leather sheath on that puppy, huh? That's a, <laughs> that's a crazy axe right there, I'll tell you what. All right, moving on. Even this little boy's axe here, okay? Little two pound head. Look at that handle. You want to talk about nice and thin? Look at that Fawn's foot. Okay, look at that. Look at that. From a blank. Okay, see how I got it nice and thin right here? Beautiful. Real happy with this little axe. Actually, this has be become my my user, my go-to. Nice little wax. I don't know where the head's from. Could be from China for all I know, but it holds an edge. Holds an edge good, works nice. Um, this is really cute. I just finished up this cruiser. Look at this cruiser, huh? What a beauty. Another handle from a blank. I don't get all of these from Nick. I'm very fortunate to have a great lumber yard up the road from me that literally carries everything, including exotic woods. I gotta show you this head. I really gotta show you this head. Oh. <laughs> Can you read that? It's a little plum. When I received this, I ordered this ax on, um, on eBay. And when it came and I opened it up, I could not believe that one edge had never ever been sharpened out of the factory. Still had the factory grind on it. The other edge had been sharpened and had been sharpened properly. And they also put a little tiny file, the little nick 
in that top of the head there so that they were they were they were profiling the heads diff each blade differently putting a different different bevel on it you know but she is a sweetheart and look at that grain huh pretty good what a beautiful little axe I just love it and the sheath is a design that I, I did years ago and I never did another one but I always liked it so I said for this one I'm gonna do that design again I like the way that it dips down here and shows you the eyes better okay that's the little plum um, okay this is it folks um, when Buckin did that video about the best handle he's made, at the same exact time he was shooting the footage for that video, I was on this build that I'm about to show you. And I am sure that this is the best handle that I have ever made to date. And I got the blank, the, the blank excuse me, from Nick Thrain. And, uh... Wait till you see this piece of wood, folks. Oh. Can you believe that? Is it unbelievable or what? Curly ash. Look at the side of the handle. It's like a hologram. It almost glows and it changes in the, in the light. It does all kinds of weird stuff. Can you guys see that? Huh. Amazing, amazing piece of wood. Got my initials on this one. Came out nice, real nice sheath. Um, I'm very proud of this head. I think you guys will get a kick out of it when you see this head. Oh, I couldn't believe it when I found it. Can you see that? It's a stiletto from Southern California. Stiletto cruiser from the 20s. Osage orange wedge, no steel wedge, doesn't need a steel wedge. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. I, I couldn't be happier. Boy, when I put that vodka on there and that grain just jumped right out, I, it just blew my mind. Can you guys see that good? Hope I'm not too close. Oh, it's madness. Look at this. That's a beautiful little cruiser. I'm really into these cruisers lately. I can't thank uh, Chris enough for this one. You guys put your sunglasses on. You've seen this one before. Can you see yourself? No steel wedge. No steel wedge. Perfect fitmanship. So, I'm just really digging it, guys and gals and everybody out there watching. It's great. And I want to show you something else. A lot of you guys are making your own wedges. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I'm buying mine from, from Thrain Axe and Saw. I just got a really nice order of them in and I want to share them with you. I want to show them to you. This is how I get them, okay? These happen to be the Osage Orange. Oh, there's a black walnut in there too, but look at these wedges. Huh? Look at these things. 
No, no, a couple of these axes, I got a handle. Um, oh, it was from Beaver Tooth. I'll show you that in a minute. And, and the, the wedge wasn't even wide enough. It should be wider than the top of your eye. At least that's the way I like them. But that's the Osage. And um, here I've got black walnut. Whole bag of black walnut wedges. And um, in here are locusts and black walnut. But I just want to pull one of these locust wedges out. Because mm. we really got this packed in there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Look at that. Big old locust wedge. They're beautiful. Really nice stuff. Nick, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You guys go give Nick some business. If you're if you're thinking about trying, you know, if you wanna if you wanna try making a handle out of a blank, that's a good place to go. Go uh, go give Nick a call and he he'll be glad to help you out. He's got a nice website. And you can go from all different grades of wood, you know, from reasonably cheap handles, because you gotta remember now, you're not gonna get a piece of junk no matter how you look at it from Nick. It's just, that's, he, he won't do that. So in my eyes, it's worth to spend a couple extra bucks. Now, this one here, this was an expensive piece of wood. If you look on his website, you'll find out how much this beautiful curly ash is. But to me, it's so worth it, especially to hang on such a beautiful head. I mean, I, I couldn't go wrong there with that deal. Um, this one here, yeah, I got a steel wedge in this one. Perfect hang. Again, let's look at the fitmanship. Can you see that? It's just spot on. And if you take, you got to take your time. You really got to take your time. Don't be in a hurry. If you got some place to go, you're probably better off not getting too deep into that project. It's nice to be able to stay right there with it and go nice and slow. Take your time. When you get tired, you know you've had enough. Then walk away from it, you know. But um, I'm just really excited for for Buck and Billy Ray that he's really feeling this making handles from blanks and he should because he did such a beautiful job the handle he made came out absolutely gorgeous fantastic um but the thing that the thing that's that's there and is always going to be there is it takes a long time especially the way billy does it he primarily uses only hand tools and i mean a rasp spoke shave sandpaper um, you know, he'll use a bandsaw to rough things out and stuff, but uh, it, it's, it's, he, he just did a, a fantastic job. And it, it takes a long time, folks. It takes a long time. I would have to say, to, for him to make that handle, he'd be coming up on eight hours. That's without driving a wedge. That's before Wagco. You know, there's a lot involved, but what you get out of it is, man, when you're done with that handle and it's just perfect, it just feels so good in your hands. You can't buy that pre-made in a store. Not when you put so much time, effort, energy, and concentration into making what you feel is the perfect handle. You know, it's exciting folks, it really is. So anyhow, there's a lot of great new channels out there um, that, that guys are getting into doing this. Um, so go check them out. Go check them out and definitely go check out Buck and Billy Ray. He's, uh, he's an amazing man. He's an amazing man. He's got an amazing channel and he's got amazing people on his channel. And it's a real good place to go. I'll tell you what, it's a good place to go. So anyhow, folks, I had to show with you all of these new um, projects. Oh, wait, before I go, one more thing. I need your help. I'm struggling with this. This is the build that I'm going to do um, with Buck and Billy Ray Smith because 
he, he suggested, hey, Joe, why don't you build a barbaric axe and I'll build a shiny axe because fucking always his, his axes are more on the barbaric side. He likes that look and so does a lot of people. And I do too. But I also like the shiny look, you know, like this one here. So he said, you build a barbaric and I'll build a shiny one. So I said, deal. So this is the one I want to use for my build. Now, I'm going to show you the separate entities. This handle right here is a beaver tooth handle. This is their run-of-the-mill beaver tooth handle. It's not bad, but it's not great. The grain could be a heck of a lot better. But this is going to be a wall hanger. I'm not going to, I, I'm going to use this one as a wall hanger. Now, if, look at this beautiful head. Look at this. Where is it? Right, right there, Sager Chemical, right there, can you see it? This is a Sager, and they were laminated, these, 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 hand, these, these bits, these blades, and look, you can see a little bit of delamination right there, you know? But anyhow, I got a good deal. This, this head's in really good shape, to be honest with you. But now, when you look at this head, you would say, it goes on the... It goes on the axe that way, right? Hear me out. Hear me out. You guys all know that the top of the eye on an axe handle is bigger than the bottom of the eye. So that when the handle goes in and you drive the wedge, it fills that wider area. Wider at the top, narrow at the bottom. Now watch this. If I take this handle and I slide it on this head the way I thought that it should go, the way that I thought it looked right, was like that. And it slid on pretty easy to this point, okay? And I drew a pencil line on there. Now I'm going to take it off. Now, if I take and I put it on this way, which looks like it's upside down to me, right? Look at where the pencil line is, folks. This is smaller and this is bigger. This, this, this was, it was a famous axe company. They didn't make a mistake. I really don't believe it. You guys, leave in the comments what you think. It just looks so weird to me like this. And I went back and I watched, I watched hundreds of photos, looked at old photos, old um, lumber jet, lumbering photos from the west coast where, where this head, the Puget Sound, would have been used. I didn't see anybody's axe look like that. Maybe, I'm not sure because of the pictures, they weren't quite clear enough, but I think I did see a couple that, that looked like they were upside down. So I don't know, and, and Buckin did a great video on this too that says, don't make this mistake. Watch that video too if you're not sure. Um, I just can't, I, I just, I, I'm not sure what to do. I, I think I know what to do, but I'd like some input on it. If you guys wouldn't mind, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. So anywho, I just wanted to share all this beautiful, beautiful axe stuff with you guys on this beautiful Saturday here. Like I said, I'm just really excited that this is um, this is really, really, really happening. It's really going on, and, and so many folks out there are really having a good time with it. And that's what it's all about. My collection is rapidly getting enormous. But I'm just having too much fun doing it. So anyhow, folks, I'm going to get to running here. Thanks a lot for stopping in, hanging out, and watching this video. Hope like, I hope you like what you saw. And um, like I said, give me a comment. Let me know what you feel about that, uh, that Puget Sound. I'd, I'd like to hear from you. Anyhow, folks, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.